Okay, let's have a quick look around this user interface. Um, the basic layout that I've got here at the moment is uh, S11 log mag, S21 log mag, S12, S22 log mag. Pretty uh, normal starting point for any VNA, I think. Um, but what we'll show you is that we've really got quite a flexible user interface here. Let's first of all get straight into the on plot controls. If I want to change the sensitivity, I'm just going to place my mouse and uh, scroll through uh, or type in new sensitivities that I want to achieve. Let's leave that at five. Um, likewise on S21, let's make that a bit more sensitive. Um, you can see here I'm measuring one of our check standards. A check standard is a 25 ohm mismatch line. Gives a rather interesting uh, display to look at here. Um, let's change the parameter on this one. Let's make that S21 time domain. Uh, that's the response in the time domain. Uh, let's change that to S11 uh, time domain. And uh, we can uh, zoom in on time here. Let's um, adjust the time base. You can see here this is live updating uh, plot that we have. And all I'm doing here is setting a start time uh, and an end time. I'll type that in as four. So we're now at what, 500 picoseconds per division. And we can see this is my 25 ohm section uh, and back to my 50 ohm line, 50 ohm reference line there on S11. Notice that whenever I hover uh, at anywhere, I'm getting a live cursor readout uh, and that will be on all traces that are on the screen. Uh, there's only one in each plot at the moment. Very convenient this for reading off frequency along the bottom and the current amplitude. Um, without having placed a marker at all. Let me just adjust the sensitivity here. We can type that 0.2. And this one, S22, let's have that as S11 again. And let's just get ourselves a Smith chart. There we go. Rather interesting Smith chart, as you can see. Uh, you can see how quickly I'm uh, changing the display uh, to uh, customize it to the needs of the uh, particular demonstration or uh, if, uh, measurement that I'm making. I can use the, uh, the uh, formatting button or the on plot uh, button here to add an axis. So now I've got S11 log mag on the left axis. I've also got it at the moment on the right hand axis, but let's change that to well, I could, could change it to phase, um, but perhaps a more uh, common one is to change it to uh, VSWR. So now uh, I've got a convenient readout uh, of F uh, VSWR and log mag uh, at, the, at the same time, and you can see my cursor measurements are picking up both traces. Both traces are live. Um, S21 log mag, let's add an access to that. Add access, and let's change that phase. There we go, and you can see it comes up with convenient scaling, 180 degrees to minus 180 degrees, uh, and that is my, uh, that, that's my phase plot uh, and my uh, log magnitude plot on the same axes there. Um, on the Smith chart, might be interesting to add one to the Smith chart as well. Let's add an axis and let's make this one S22. So we've got uh, S22 on the Smith chart as, as well. And you can see that I'd simply whistled around the, um, the setup there uh, using on plot controls. I haven't used a menu at all yet. Um, Here's another one, maximize graph. Let's temporarily have a, a zoom in on the, uh, 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 on the Smith chart. You can see the detail here quite clearly. Uh, and given that this is a great big monitor in front of me, uh, it's really easy 
uh, and you can see I can drag my cursor measurements around uh, and I've still got live updates on, on here too. Uh, I'll, uh, we'll see zoom region and magnify features a little bit later on, so I'll move swiftly on from those at the moment. Let me also demonstrate here, let's minimize this graph again. You saw me earlier on, I changed the time base on this plot. Uh, I can on this, on this one, I can also, let's have a look at this here. Let's, that's about four gigahertz there. What's this here? That's about six gigahertz. So let's zoom in on those, six gigahertz. And you saw that live update and this is uh, four gigahertz. And there we go. Um, so quite quickly, we've limited all of our plots here uh, to um, the narrower span, four gigahertz to six gigahertz. Uh, and you saw them all update live. And here we've got uh, uh, the, the Smith segment uh, that we've just typed in at the bottom. Um, we can also recenter this if we like. Where's my center? My center is 5.09 gigahertz. Let's do that, 5.09 gigahertz. And that has brought my uh, plot to the center of the screen. So again, very, very quick uh, to whistle around the controls and get focused on what you want to measure. Um, let's put this back to 0.3 megahertz and this to 8500 megahertz. And there we go, we're back. Uh, back to our full span. Uh, I'm currently running at one kilohertz bandwidth. Uh, I can speed up the measurement considerably by changing the bandwidth. Uh, and of course, straight away, I can see the impact of that. If I've got no noise, I might as well have, or very little noise, I might as well um, run the bandwidth that allows an update rate Let's uh, slow things down or deepen the uh, dynamic range. And now you can see we're at 100 hertz, which we all know and expect to be somewhat slower in our measurement, but our dynamic range has improved uh, dramatically, of course. Not that this particular network requires us to, uh, to have a very high dynamic range. Likewise, we can change the number of points here, reduce that to 201. Is that enough detail? Well, maybe it is, but if we're not satisfied, we can go straight back. There we go. If we want to add some uh, memory traces to this, uh, we would simply add them thus. And you can see I've already added three recordings of course, this, this is uh, uh, not, not a, uh, a dot that is changing, but I can assure you I've now got all three, I've got four traces up there, three memory traces uh, live on that blue trace and three memory traces on that dark blue trace. Uh, and I was able to get those up really quickly. I can hide simply by clicking here. So there we are, that's got me focused on the, uh, the memory, the, the last memory trace that I stored. Uh, so you can quickly, very quickly com uh, compare memo one with memo two, live with memo one, etc. There we go. And if I want to turn all of those off, I'm going to go to the display menu uh, and cut, cut. There we go. But the display menu shows us that we might have some more interesting things that we can do with this user interface. It looks as though we might be able to uh, change the layouts up here. We could quite quickly get eight plots up uh, in a layout um, and those new plots have been added. We can of course configure all these plots as we wish or we can go to the uh, plots manager 
Uh, those, those are my plots that I've just added. Let's delete that one. Let's uh, expand that one. And uh, close. Uh, and you can see that I can quite easily get focus on uh, what I want to focus on. And that, that Smith chart at the moment is a relatively small one. Let's get rid of that. Let's uh, put that out like that, and that out like that. And we've now got a big Smith chart. Oh, I've still got a gap here. Uh, let me add a graph. Close, there we go. So you can re reconfigure the display to focus on the measurements that you want to see at any one time. And you can go on doing this ad infinitum. You can go on adding as many memory traces as you like. Uh, in practice, the limitation is the size and resolution of your display screen uh, and the size and resolution of each plot uh, uh, that you want to keep an eye on. And if you do only want to keep an eye on the data uh, while you're the, the, the other data is while you're focusing on the Smith chart, then you can come up with an arrangement like this. Uh, and certainly uh, I've had uh, uh, up to 32 uh, traces running at the same time on a, on a 4K display. So uh, great flexibility, very fast to achieve. This is the basis of the user interface on Pico VNA5. Thank you.